on on our YouTube channel, it shows live. So right now, if you go there and you click on the little circle, um, I see Kathleen. Thank you so much. How exciting. You already have a thousand people on Zoom. Thank you, Kathleen. So oh, I'm gonna turn off the I'm gonna turn off the sound on my phone because then I'll hear myself twice. <laughs> So Barney, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, we are thrilled that there are this many people that wanna learn about the 2024 card and play Mahjong. Uh, if you want to, you can take the Zoom chat or you could take the pictures and kind of scroll them off to the side. If you don't want them blocking the screen, um, only gonna have <laughs> pictures on the screen for a little bit and then it's going to be the Barney show. I'm going to turn over the mic to Barney. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. My name is Dara. Donna and I are Modern Mahjong. If you haven't been to our Zooms before and you found out about this because you're excited about the card review, thank you for joining us. We are a two-women-owned small business in Hollywood, Florida, and we love Mahjong. We've expanded to Canasta, and we have met the most fabulous people through Mahjong, and we are thrilled tonight to have one of these most fabulous people do his annual card review with us. Um, as many of you may know, attendance was limited here, so you might be seeing us on YouTube. Yes, if you need to leave, we will be streaming this on YouTube, and then we will be sharing it as well on YouTube. The full video will be made available. It's going to be long, so it'll take a little while to upload. We will put it on our Facebook channel and our YouTube. We always share tips and visuals throughout the year, as well as at the beginning of the year when we have the new card. Barney's gonna talk later about a graph and a tracking sheet that we have a link to that's in our Facebook Mahjong community in our files tab. If you're not on social media, you could send us an email at modernmahjong at gmail.com, but otherwise we will share everything in the notes to the YouTube uh, video. This is what the tracker looks like. If you are on our Facebook group, you might have seen this recently. Since the card came out, we have been scanning it to come up with areas. We think it's a great card. We really are enjoying it. Certain times if you're new, some of the um, some of the hands might be a little confusing when you're first reading them. So we go through just to kind of clear up any confusion. So that's something. Uh, if you are interested in getting better at Canasta, we have a strategy session coming up. That's with a different Donna. So Donna and I, blonde Donna and I are Mahjong Donna. And then there's Donna Miller Small, who is Mahjong and Canasta. She's my Canasta Donna. So that's something you could register for. On April 17th in two weeks, Donna and I are going to be doing just a catch up. What everybody learned today, what they learned for the first couple of weeks playing on the card. And then we're going to get together. And we're going to do a frequently asked questions and just go over things. May 5th, if you've heard of Karen Gouin, she goes by the name Bubby Fisher. She is gonna be doing her tips and tricks. If you have any questions, feel free to post on Facebook, email us. These are some examples of our curated collection of Mahjong gifts and accessories. And for those of you who don't know, Barney is so selfless with his time and we've had him on other YouTubes. You couldn't do not know if you can no. trying to make it bigger. Uh, and, and if you can't see the whole screen, don't worry about it. I'm going to end this in just a minute, and Barney's going to talk, so you don't need to see the screen. But Barney does this, prepares this on his own time, and does this video for us at no cost. So we we pay for increased capacity to host it, but we wanted to prevent, present this to all of you at our expense. So thank you all for joining us. We love seeing all of you here. And with that said... This is the 2024 National Mahjong League card review by Barney. And after all of this, don't worry if you don't take notes, um, you will get the PDF after this. So with that said, I am going to, at some point, Barney, if you ever need me to, just let me know and I could put some of the hands up. Okay. Otherwise, now I am going to stop share. Okay. And, um, Barney, I almost didn't recognize you. Today. I know. I know. I was hoping you were going to say something. Wonder what is he doing with that mustache on? Well, it was sort of like a little challenge the other night. I was with some friends and I told them, I think I'm going to put the mustache on. And they said, you should do it. You should do it. So I'm wearing a mustache today because, as you're going to hear me say in a little while, one of the hands that has uh, most intrigued me on this year's card is what I refer to as the handlebar mustache 
hand. It's a very interesting pattern, which I don't believe has ever appeared before, at least not that I can remember. And we're going to talk a little bit about that at a certain point. So with that, the mustache is coming off. So there we go. So first of all, uh, Dara, Donna, thank you so much for uh, inviting me back. I absolutely love doing this. This is uh, you know, a passion of mine, playing the game and writing about the game. I, I really love it. And more than that, I love sharing uh, my thoughts with people and hopefully somebody will get something out of what I talk about tonight. And uh, hopefully I'll make it interesting and fun. And I'm hopefully, maybe if we have some time at the end, we can take some questions as well. But as, as you heard Dara say, uh, everything that I wrote here, all the notes that I prepared will be available to you. So you can read them um, you know, at your leisure after this meeting is over and hopefully you will enjoy it. My email address, uh, it, I believe, is on here somewhere. I hope I didn't take it off. But if not, I will provide you my email address as well. And you can write to me uh, directly if you have any questions about anything. Uh, so with that, I, I, I'm going to begin. And I'm, I received the card um, on the 30th. It's funny, every year on my father's birthday, which is March 30th, the card seems to show up in my mailbox. So it's been like that for four or five years now. And I've been fortunate enough to have played... Uh, about 150 games uh, since I received the card. So a lot of this is based on my impressions of what I've seen, uh, you know, in playing both online and in person in those 150 games. This, none of this is science here. A lot of it is art in terms of just what I see. And I just wanted to share some of my thoughts with you. Uh, one of the first things that I got a kick out of is, boy, the comments that you hear around the table when you're dealing with a new card. They really do change quite dramatically. Uh, some of my favorites that I was just jotting down as I was playing recently, you know, boy, do I miss that hand from last year. And uh, where is that hand again? And I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. Lots of these comments, I think, are things we hear as we start playing with the new card. And it's a fun time. Obviously, we've played with the last card for a whole year. I'm sure many of us we're ready to start playing with something new. I think a lot of the feedback I've gotten in the last year is a lot of people enjoyed the card very much, as did I. But I think at the end of year, at the end of the year, we're all looking for something new and different. Uh, and so, for many people, the card has arrived. You've started to play, and for those of you who've not gotten your card yet, hopefully, it will be in the mail uh, pretty soon, and you can start playing and enjoying the new card. I always start these presentations with a big uh, shout out and thank you to the National Mahjong League folks uh, in New York City. Uh, you know, obviously they are our league. They create our card. They're responsible for producing the card every year and, you know, provide so much joy to us. So we're very indebted to them. They work painstakingly for weeks and weeks and weeks to pull together the card that we now see in front of us. So uh, to that card committee and to the folks who run the National Mahjong League, I just wanted to say thank you. So I'm going to start with what I'm calling my 10,000-foot view of my impressions of the new card. And hopefully some of these will resonate with some of you. One of the comments I heard a lot of last year was don't like the don't like the quintans. A lot of people didn't really enjoy playing that section. They just didn't like the quint hand for whatever the reason. Sometimes it's just hard to pinpoint it. But I think we were all hoping for some better quint hands this year. And I got to tell you, my first impression with these quint hands, it's a good one. I'm going to talk a little bit more about them later on. But generally, I would say my overall impression from the quint section of the card is a very good one. I'm feeling very, very positive about it. Many people last year said, oh my God, where's the hand with all the dragons? I have all these dragons in my hand. What am I going to do with them? And lo and behold, here comes the hand this year in the wind section of the card that uses all of the dragons. I guarantee you people will be very excited to see and play that hand. We have dragons all over the card this year. Another topic that I'll bring about, I'll talk a little bit more about as we go on. One of the things that really jumps off the page to me is what I'm going to call pattern variety. One of the absolute most important things you can do in getting familiar with the new card 
is understanding the predominant patterns that are on the card. Again, we'll talk more about this in another section of this presentation, but I just the quick reaction that I see lots and lots of different patterns this year, and I think that's going to make the card interesting. My mustache pattern, which I told you about, the 32423, one I've never seen before, very happy, and I'm already going there pretty frequently. So I think I'm going to enjoy playing with the mustache hand uh, this year. Now, I will say, I feel as though the card generally feels a tad easier to me than the card last year. I think I'm basing this on the fact that I, I think I have a pretty good grasp on the card already. I It feels shorter than the time it took me in years past. So, And I also see that there are certain hands on the card last year, one which I'll talk about in great depth later, that are similar to hands this year, but with easier patterns. So instead of having two pairs, it might have four of a kind. It might have a Kong of a number. So my general feeling to this card is that it's feeling like a little bit easier, which you know might be helpful, certainly for some of the newer players. And let's see, though, how that what it turns out to be as the year goes on. Now, the other thing, and I was sharing this with Dara earlier, don't ask me why. I don't have a good explanation for this right away, but I will tell you in those 150 games so far that I've played, Many people are winning in the 13579 section of the card. It's very interesting. There's one fewer hand in that section than last year. So it's not like I could say there are more, you know, odd hands this year, but it just seems like for whatever the reason, maybe these hands will prove to just be easier or more appealing. I don't know, but 13579 by far is the hand that I see more people winning this year. So another thing that I can't wait to see how the year plays out, if that continues to be true, or if that's just something right here at the start of the year. For the math nerds like me, we're very excited because not only do we have addition hands this year, we have multiplication hands this year as well. And I'll talk later about how that's already one of my favorite hands on the card as well. So addition and multiplication. The addition hands are all together and the multiplication hands, two of them, are separate are in uh, two different sections of the card. Lots of flowers, and you're going to notice these flowers are everywhere. I'll talk more about flowers later on, but again, it's nice to see that we're going to have a lot of options with flowers, and not to mention we have two hands this year with five flowers. So somebody's going to put up five flowers. We're going to know right away that they're either in that quint section of the hand or in that sixth row of the consecutive run. Thank you so much, Donna, for helping there. Thank you. It's so we have... It's okay. I answered uh, either one. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> it's great. So two hands with the five flowers that uh, be interesting, again, to see how often that comes up. Okay. This is also uh, on the Chinese calendar. This is the year of the dragon. And I did a little bit of research on this. And again, it's a wonderful year for Mahjong players, particularly since dragons. But the year, the sign of the dragon is a symbol of strength and power. It's associated with good fortune, wisdom, success, and protection. And I'm hoping that this year of the dragon and this new card brings you lots of lots of fortune and success as you're playing with your friends. Okay, a couple of things. Now we'll get into the, the sort of the normal pattern that I follow every year when I do this review. Uh, again, you'll see all of this, so don't worry about taking any notes if you were there, but the card is red. You know they alternate from red and blue every year, so make sure all the cards in your bags and your pouches are red, not blue. They alternate you know, every year, and I think that pattern has been true since the very, very beginning. Similar to last year, this section, uh, this card has 10 different sections. It had grown last year by one section because of the addition section. This year again has the addition section. So there are 10 different sections and there are 73 different hands on this card. Now I always spend a little bit of time in reminding people how I define hands and people can do it any way they like. Maybe people do it differently. 
But I think you all see on the screen right now, Dara still has up the uh, the hands. Take a look at that consecutive run firsthand. See the one three. See it's listed there. It's printed on the card two different ways. So I consider that two different hands. Now that is much different than. How many different ways can I make this hand? Because if you ever sat down and tried to figure out how many different ways there are to make a hand, which involve changing of the suits, for example, you know, these numbers become astronomically large. This, I think someone said somewhere there might be 1,500 hands that you could make by changing suits with these hands this year. But for the purposes of my count and some of the things I'm going to talk about today, if you look, you know, and if you see it printed differently, take a look at that 2468, that top row, that to me is counted as two hands because you can make it in two different ways in terms of how you change, whether you do it all in one suit or if you do it in two suits. That to me counts as two different hands. So this year, there are 73. That's three more than there were last year. So a couple of extra hands this year in terms of providing some additional variety. The other thing I, I noticed this year, there were no big swings. So it's not like all of a sudden the two, four, six, eight, you know, section of the card went from having, you know, six to 12. No, there were no big swings in the number of hands uh, in either, in any of these sections. So I don't really see an incredible, well, everybody's going to be playing even because there are so many even hands. And like I said before, the odd hands have gone down by one, and yet a lot of people seem to be gravitating toward those uh, 13579 hands. Okay, patterns. I started to talk earlier about patterns. Patterns are key. So every year, the card for the most prominent patterns alternates between Hung, Tung, Kong, Kong, which would be three of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind, four of a kind, with Pung, Kong, Pung, Kong, three, four, three, four. This year, typically with the evens, the even years, this is 2024, we're back to three, three, four, four, or Pung, Pung, Kong, Kong, which means that is one of the most prominent patterns on the card. And why is it good to know that? Because I think over time as you play, you say to yourself, oh, I know that was one of the easiest hands in the 2468 section, for example. And I know that there must be a Pong, Pong, Kong, Kong. And sure enough, there are. So people will continue to use their card, of course, to have that in front of them. But in the back of my mind, I think it's good for everyone to recognize that Pong, Pong, Kong, Kong, 3344 four is one of the most common patterns for this year, as it is every year when the, in an even year. So I keep that in mind. Now, I also said there are lots and lots of other patterns. If you start looking at them, you're going to see patterns like pair of flowers, then Kong, Kong, Kong. So the pair, three Kongs in a row, that's very popular. I mentioned my mustache. Uh, I thought that's a very interesting one for this year. So the three, two, four, three, two, that's sort of an interesting pattern. So one of the things that I strongly suggest to everybody as they look at these cards is to try to make yourself as familiar with these patterns, because overall, that's going to help you as you become more and more familiar with the card. Okay, I'm going to do a little show and tell on this one. And... Let's see if I can see myself. Oh, I think I can. So I'm going to show you. Perfect. Is that perfect? Can people see this? Yeah. So the north is in. Well, I guess maybe because I have the chat up. If you just, oh, okay. if you just move it a teeny bit to the left. To the left. Yeah. My, I'm sorry, my oh, left. Your left. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, I put my tiles here on this rack to show you this image. Let me if I can make, move a little closer. I hope you can see it. But this hand is a hand from last year's card, three Norths, three Souths, and then a run, three consecutive numbers, pair, pair, Kong. Now, 
this hand was, I thought, a very interesting hand for last year. And I don't know what you all feel about it, but I got to tell you, I don't think I can remember any session of Mahjong with my friends where someone did not win with this hand. I found this to be an extremely easy hand. It came up a lot. And the other thing that was really scary about this hand, for any of you who happen to play in tournaments, if someone puts up the three Norths and the three Souths and nothing else, you know, you have to be very careful about what they might be playing because they could be playing anything, right? So, of course, you're looking at the table, you're trying to count tiles, but this is a very hard hand, you know, to play and be careful with. And in tournament play, typically throwing in two exposures comes with the minus 10 points. So people, especially in tournaments, hated seeing the north, south, or the end again, this, the other version was the east and west with the same thing. But this one was a hand that caused a lot of angst last year. And I was absolutely certain I would have placed a big bet on the fact that this hand was going to come off the card this year. But it did not. And in fact, we now have this hand. How's that for centering? Is okay? Perfect. Yeah? Okay. Now, what's the first thing you notice about this? There's that terrible three uh, Pung of North, Pung of South. And now you have two Kongs. So you don't even need the pairs anymore. You need two consecutive numbers in Kongs. And of course, you can use Jokers, like I've displayed here. So I was a little surprised to see this one. This hand is easier than last year by far so my hunch again tells me is we're going to see a lot of this hand being played this year and again tournament players will again be struggling with people putting up three norths and three souths or three easts and three wests because it's a very hard hand to defend against so just wanted to share that that's one thing that sort of surprised me and one of the things that i would have made a terrible bet if i said we weren't going to see that on the uh, on the hand again. Okay. Um, the hands that piqued my interest. Uh, we had up one of them before. I The five flower hands with the one, two, three run, and then the pong pong, right? So this one is in the consecutive. This is row six. I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gravitating toward this hand. I think it's fun. It's got a very unique pattern to it with those one, twos, and threes, the consecutive run in one suit, and then you're going to change suits for the the pair, the pungs that come after it. So, of course, this could be four, five, six, seven, seven, anything that fits the pattern. But I'm very, very intrigued by this hand. I think it's a pretty looking hand. It's a little bit unique, so probably gravitating for that. And the other one, and the other ones that I would talk about just for me personally, because I like math are the two multiplication hands. They've I've had some success with them already, so people playing with me know that uh, Barney is often going for the addition or the multiplication hand. So I was intrigued by them as well. You see one of them there in that one, three, five, seven, nine section uh, in row five. So you could take the three times five or the five times seven and you um, the other direction. Yeah, there you, you could find them in the... Um, uh, well, then there's the other one in the two, four, six, eight. You have four times six is 24 and six times eight, 48. I like those hands. So they intrigue me. So I think we all sort of gravitate toward our, toward a, toward our favorite hands this year. So curious to see what you all uh, find as your favorite hands on the card this year. So years ago, I would say maybe this, maybe around four or five years ago, it was interesting the concealed hands were actually spread out uh, across each each section of the card. So the league, I don't know, you know, there was a decision made. I don't know if it's a rule or something that they've just been doing now, but they've really helped in, I think they've helped dramatically by making sure that all of the concealed hands are the last row of each section if there is a concealed uh, hand for that section. So that's easier for us to remember. All the concealed hands are at the bottom of each section, which I think is very nice. And the only thing I would point out is that this year, 
35 cent hands have come back into play. So you will see 30 cent hands and 35 cent hands. And we just all have to pay very close attention to that. As we know, we want to make sure that those payouts are correct. So I don't think we saw that on last year's card. I don't think we had a 35 cent hand. Uh, I might be wrong, but I don't think so. But this year we have both 30 and 35 cent hands that are back in place. So just be pay attention to them. Um, you know, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, it's not really clear to me what the rules are in terms of how much, you know, a hand should be valued. And truthfully, I don't think there are any rules. I think there are some general guidelines that, you know, tell you that if there aren't a lot of pairs, the hands are going to be less expensive. If you have three pairs to a hand, you're probably talking about a 30 cent hand. If one of those pairs happens to be flowers, maybe it's still only a 25%, uh, 25 cents. But generally, the number of pairs is, and, and singletons is what is going to define how much the league values for each of the hands. But at the end of the day, and the general consensus I get from speaking to people in the know or people who've you know worked on the committee in the past is at the end of the day, they play so many of these hands, they just look to see which ones come up more frequently than others. And if they come up less frequently, they could be assigned a slightly higher value. So a 35 cent hand, you know, maybe doesn't have all those pairs, but that's based on play. And I think that's really good insight that they've really tested the card hundreds and hundreds, of, if not thousands of games. And so based on frequency, that's what they use uh, to determine whether or not they're going to make any modifications to the to the value of each of the hands. Okay, I mentioned before dragons, uh, 16 hands this year have dragons. Again, about the same as it was last year. They appear in every section of the card with the exception- I forgot I wanted to watch this. With the, so, exception, the exception of the um, uh, addition section. So you, have, you can find flowers everywhere. And, and as I said, I'm I'm sorry, um, this was with dragons. I was dragons. I wanted to start with dragons. The dragons are all over the card. They're in 16 hands, are using these dragons, and they're in every section of the card with the exception of the addition hands. And as I commented earlier, I think one of the most fun facts about the dragons this year is that we have a hand that now uses all of them. So I'm sure a lot of people will be happy with that. I'll go back to the quint section. Uh, for just a second, I commented, you know, initially, I don't think many people liked it. I'm I'm getting a good feeling uh, for the quint section uh, this year. There is no longer a section, uh, a quint hand on the card this year that only uses one joker. So at a minimum, you're going to need two jokers to make any of these hands. That was a little different because last year we did have that one, the two, three, four, five hand that only used the one joker if you possibly got lucky. But you could have made that with just one this year. You can't. You need two for um, for each of them. Uh, and then the other thing that I find, and I'll be very curious to see how this is played out. Again, for those of us who play in tournaments, it'll be very curious to see how tournament directors operate this second hand on the card uh, in the quint section. Because if you look at that, now these could be these could be any two numbers as long as they don't match. So the second hand, you can't have a pung of uh, a quint of ones in one suit and a quint of ones in another suit. Those quints, those numbers cannot match. Okay. And it could be any wind and those numbers have to be in two different suits. Well, this will be another very interesting hand. If you, if you are exposed, let's say the, the quint of those ones in green and you put up four norths, now that other quint can be any number, any number. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of things that that could be. We know it's not the one, all right? So we know that. And, but there's a lot of other numbers that that can be. And so now the question will be, that's going to be a, a tricky hand to defend against when someone's showing the quint and then four wins. You're going to have to really pay attention to the discards and hope that if you see a couple of threes or fives on the table, that the person isn't sitting there with other threes or fives and a boatload of jokers, which of course could happen. But this is one of the ones that I think is going to be very interesting um, and will be curious to see what penalties get um, assigned to this in tournament play 
for throwing into, let's say, a Quint and the Norths or a Wind. So in, I'm very curious to see how it plays out. But this is one we're going to have to be very careful of. But I do like this section. I, I think it's it's interesting. And again, you have the flowers, you have the dragons, and you have the winds all in this section of the card. So lots of flexibility there. And if you say to yourself, gee, th last year, was there a wind quint? You don't have to think about that this year because the answer is going to be yes. Every one of those other types of tiles, winds, dragons, and flowers, they all appear in that quint section. Okay, um, the big hand. Ah, this is... This is interesting. Um, I like the fact that they, uh, you know, they change things up a bit. I mean, almost every year or, you know, often we see this big hand, that, which is the last hand in singles and pairs. A lot of people just refer to this as the big hand. It's always the one that's got the highest value. I know two years ago, 2022 was a little different. It was in a different section. But generally, the big hand, the last hand in singles and pairs, typically the one with the largest value, sort of interesting to me. They did not go with what have been the classic, what? Pair of flowers, 2024, 2024, 2024, in three different suits. That would have been the classic, just like it was last year with all the 2023s. They went with uh, 2024 twice in two, in, in two suits and then introduced the wins. So again, I think this is an interesting phenomenon in this this feels easier to me from the perspective of, you know, people tend to pass wins early on, maybe this year, maybe they'll, yeah. pass, maybe they'll pass fewer wins this year. I don't know. But I think if people find themselves with a lot of wins and a few twos or a pair of dragons, they're going this way. I think a lot of people are going to go this way. And the nice thing about this hand is if you go dead on this hand, the simple backup for this one is to move into the concealed 2024 hand in the first section of the card. So I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Uh, for those of you who are, are members of Mahjong, that's it. One of the websites that- We uh, can't see the top row of the card, please. There you go. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, there's uh, a, lot, a few people have already made this hand. So we've had a couple of people posting online that they've already made this hand. So it would be very curious to see if it does turn out to be a little bit easier um, or if people are protecting wins even more this year than they have in the years past. And maybe it remains a tough card, a tough hand. But I'm thinking this is going to be made more frequently than the classic pair of flowers with the three uh, 2020, whatever the year is. But we shall see. Okay, um, I think one of the things that both, I think the league gets feedback on every year and just a lot of general online chat is around the words that are used in parentheses. There's, you know, can I do this? Can I do this? The league, you know, gets a lot of questions. I see a lot of people asking, you know, questions online and, you know, Let's face it, the card only has so much real estate. You can't write a book to explain everything. So I believe the league does a really nice job of trying to write short sentences when needed to help you understand how you're going to make these hands. But one of the common things that I see over and over and over is people are just overthinking these words. I always say to myself, the way you make this hand is exactly the way it's printed on that card. If it's printed with two different color inks, you got to make that hand in two different suits. And the only time I really look to see it in parentheses is if it's not the way you might think. So when they want it to be a little bit different than the way you might think it to be, then they would put commentary in there. But my general rule of thumb to my friends is let's not overthink these words. I don't think there's, especially for the words this year, I don't see anything that I would call, you know, confusing or ambiguous. So I think the messaging, the words used in parentheses are very clear this year. So I don't know how many questions will come up, but just because I wanted to show you one, 
This was one, I think some words that were a little bit different. It's the hand in the three, six, nine section of the card that talks about opposite dragons. Okay. So the hand looks like this, right? So you're starting with, let's just say you're starting with it this way. You have the four flowers, the pair of threes, the pair of six, the three nines, right? So you have them all in one suit, the three, the sixes, and the nines in one suit. And then it says you can do those dragons as long as the three dragons have to be opposite dragons. So what does opposite dragons mean? Well, it could be anything other than the red. So opposite dragons means anything other than the red. So if you wanted to make this hand with, like I'm showing it to you, with the green dragons, that's totally fine. And I know that this is a vintage set, so the soaps are a little bit unusual. The soaps and some of the vintage sets don't have a pattern. They're just a complete blank tile like that. So there are three soap tiles at the end. You can make it with the three, six, nine in red, and then use three soaps. And I think we have the image there. This is row six in the three, six, nine, where you see the reference to opposite dragon. As long as it's not matching what you did the three, six, nine in, you're good. You're good to go. Marty, since you're in this section, yeah. The one hand on Mahjong community on Facebook, we did um, a review of certain things that might come up for people reading the card. One thing we talked about is line number four with the pung of threes and then matching dragons and then the pung of threes and matching dragons. Yeah. People were confused since line two says like pungs, but like line four does not. You could see that that parentheses went across the whole line. So if your three is a three, that first grouping, your next grouping has to be a three. If you used a six, your other grouping has to be a six. And same thing with nine. You can't mix the three and the six and the nine there. Yep. Good point. Yeah, that's a good one. Very nice. Okay. Okay. Repeat hands. You know, one of the things that you've all noticed is that some of the hands from last year come back unchanged, completely unchanged. And that's intentional. I think that's an intentional decision to make sure that there are hands out there that we already have mastered and they come back right on to the new card completely unchanged. And if you look at this year's card versus last year, 12 of those hands are exactly the same, which is about 70%, 17% of all the hands on the card. And if you look back, like I've been playing, I've been playing on what eight years now. So I've been I've used nine different cards. So when I look back to the nine cards that I've played with, 32 of the hands on this year's card are hands you would find on cards from the last nine years, which represents about 44%. So, you know, closing in on half of all the hands on this card are hands that I've seen since, you know, starting to play the game about eight years ago. I do a quick calculation every year on what is the average value of a hand. This year, it's 29 cents, 29.24 cents. It's down a little bit from last year, and it was down a little bit from the year before. So I said at least one thing in life is getting cheaper, and that is the average value of hands on the Mahjong card. So maybe you'll spend a little less money this year. Okay, always good to know if there is a single exposure that if someone puts up, you automatically know they made a mistake and you can politely call their hand dead. And this year, those exposures are anybody puts up three flowers, that hand will be called dead because there are no hands with three flowers. There are no hands with a quint of winds and there are no hands with a quint of dragons. So those are the three things that automatically, if someone put up accidentally, their hand would be dead. So probably not very common that someone's going to do quints of winds or quints of dragons, but be careful of anyone trying to put up three flowers. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't exist. And the other thing that's even more interesting is, can someone put up a, uh, an exposure that automatically tells you what hand they're playing? 
And as best I can tell, and if anybody proves me to be wrong, I'd love to hear from you. But right now, I don't believe there is. I think three or four years ago, we played with a card when if someone put up three nines, it was the only, there was only one hand on that card that could be made with three nines. So as soon as that person put up three nines, you knew exactly what hand they were playing. And um, so that that was a, sort of unusual, but I don't see anything like that on this year's card. I mentioned it's a big year for flowers. Uh, there are flowers all over the place. Uh, two flowers, four flowers, five flowers. So if you're a flower lover, you're going to find lots of flowers all over the place on this year's card. Uh, I always was intrigued when I first started playing. I was always intrigued every year. Two flowers, then Kongs of three sixes and nines appeared on every every card. That was like uh, the the hand that was most common. Two years ago, they took it off. Last year, they added it back with the small twist in that it was four threes, a pair of sixes, and four nines. But this year, the three six nine, both in one suit and three suits, is back, and so it, it continues to be the most popular hand of any hand on it, on any card for the last nine years. Okay, another thing that I always I talk about is how many times do you you think you're so safe, right? You you know, I'm going to make a discard. No one's going to call Mahjong on this, right? This has to be an absolutely safe tile. Well, you know, it's got to be very careful with safe tiles. You, nothing is always perfectly safe, especially when your card has news on it, right? So we have news hands on the card. And if someone's playing news and you see, you know, you see, uh, news on the table, the lots of wins on the table, you could be throwing out the last north because you see three of them on the table, but somebody only needs the one north. So, you know, that tile that you thought was so safe really isn't that safe. And again, there's lots and lots of hand, hands out there that are using these tiles. So you're never perfectly safe. But if I had to tell you something, if you could account for seven flowers so you're holding the last flower eight you know seven are on the table if you can account for uh the dragons the red dragons or the green dragons there are no hands this year using a single flower or a single red dragon or a single green dragon so if you can account for all of them and you're holding the last one Obviously, there's an excellent chance no one's waiting for that last one, with the possible exception of the fact that they might be sitting with a boatload of jokers, and now they're going to call that red dragon, for example, and put it up with three jokers. So if you had to pick which are the safest tiles, only because they don't appear anywhere as singletons, if you can account for seven flowers, if you can account for three of those green dragons or three of the green dragons, those are probably the safest tiles. But again, all bets are off when someone's sitting opposite you with a lot of dragons. And the last comment I wanna make before I talk about some of the things I do every year for me personally to just get ready, I always read the back of the card. I flip over the card, I look at the words that appeared last year and the words that appear this year. And my first reaction was, wow, they've made a lot of changes. I don't see that sentence anymore or that's where's that whole section around scoring and bonus? Don't worry, they've made some changes to the back of the card, but a lot of it was grouping. They've grouped things differently. They've changed some sentence structures, but there's nothing that I can see on the back of the card that has changed any of the rules that we play by or anything that I would call sub really substantive in terms of you better know this because this is now changed. There are no big changes like that. I found all of it was just in terms of making things perhaps easier to read, reorganizing the back of the card, but don't worry about it. I still would read it, but there's nothing that I believe you're going to find there that's going to change anything about the rules uh, in terms of how we play the game. Okay. So we have about 10 minutes left, uh, and I'm going to just quickly walk through 
um, a couple of things that I do. So new card is out. What is it that I do to get ready for the with this new card? First thing is I write this article and it helps me. I know I'm going to do this presentation. I know I'm going to write this article. And just in preparing to write this article, I learn a lot, right? I'm studying the card. I'm looking at things differently. So writing this article helps me. I play Siamese. You want to, you want to learn Siamese to me is a little bit more difficult than regular. So it's an opportunity to play with two hands. You get really familiar with the card if you're playing Siamese Mahjong. So if you have a friend and can play Siamese Mahjong, give it a try. I play online with robots. I don't typically like playing with the robots, but in the month of April, I go on to one particular site and I play with the robots. It allows you to go through many, many, many hands very, very quickly. And I think that's a good investment to go there and play. I write down, I talked about this last year, and Dara and Donna were kind enough to create this, and there's going to be a link in this article that's going to point you right here. It's a wonderful four-page document that they created for me. Thank you so much for doing it. But on this first page, and this is no joke, if you are a visual person, and let me show you my little chicken scratch here. If you are a visual person, Writing down every one of the hands in different color inks is the, for me personally, this is the number one thing that I do that makes me most familiar with all the hands and all the sections of the card. I do it every year. And so they've created these lovely sheets that you can use if you want to do the same thing. Different color inks, it really, really works, especially if you are a visual person like I know many people in the Mahjong world are. I build every hand, I build every hand <laughs> on my rack. So every hand I go, I get tiles, I put them up on the rack so my eyes and my brain can see exactly what this pattern looks like in terms of tiles on a rack as opposed to numbers printed on a page or letters printed on a page. I create. I had this little game that I talked about a couple of years ago, and I still do it. I take a winning hand. So let's just say it was this hand that we've been talking about so far. Okay, I take the three, six, nine, the five, the four flowers and the dragons. I put them on the table, mix them up. I remove seven tiles and then choose seven random tiles, put them back on the table, mix them up, put them back on my rack. So that now I know there's a good hand in here, right? Because I know that this that there's a winning hand with seven tiles already toward Mahjong. So I have a really, really good hand to start, but now I have this smattering of other tiles and I look to see if my brain can identify where was that winning hand. In some instances, there's a better option, but at least at a minimum, can I find that winning hand based on what I knew was already there on my rack. It's an interesting exercise. Give that a shot. Um, I This next one is tricky, and it, it would take you a long time to do this. But as we talked about single exposures that can only be one hand, this year we said there were none. The real game is now looking at pairs of exposures to know when someone puts up these two exposures, whether they be pungs or kongs, as soon as somebody puts them up, I now know that they can only be doing one hand. So with this card, someone puts up three ones, three nines, whether they be the same suit or whether they be different suits, I know I'm going right to the mustache hand. Right? It's one, three, five, seven, nine. That's the only way that that could be made. If anybody finds me to be wrong, please let me know. But I believe that's it. Those two exposures can only be made in that one hand. So if you literally started to write down, okay, three ones and three ones, where does, where does that show up on the card? Three ones and three twos. Where does that show up on the card? three ones and three fours, and you went through all of the different combinations, then it could be four ones and four twos, four dragons and four norths. 
when you start to try to figure out what all those combinations are, and you then start to say, where are they? Then you really start to understand the structure of the card and what things will automatically point to a particular hand or maybe just two hands on the card. And that helps you when playing the game. Okay. Um, as a complete nerd, I take a picture of each of the panels. I have them on my iPhone. If I'm waiting in traffic or if I'm waiting for some a plane at an airport and I have nothing to do, I look at the pictures on my phone. And so I'm studying the card a little bit while I'm there trying to just kill time. And then finally, you will go online and you will find lots of people who share their thoughts and their insights to their, you know, their world. And so you can go and look for people who are doing this. There's wonderful articles written. We mentioned Bobby Fisher before. I know she writes a wonderful article. Uh, there's an I Love Mahjong group that does a lot of mathematical stuff, which they've done incredible work. So you can go out there and you can find lots of, you could find other people who are talking about their impressions and their reviews of the card. Lots of interesting things to read. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed what I covered today. I hope you enjoy what you learned there. And more importantly, I hope you enjoy this next year playing with our new card. So I just wanted to thank you all. Thank you so much, Barney. That was great. And I'm switching. I was trying to share. I was trying to share something. So everybody is saying their thank yous to Barney. Okay. And um, I was going to go into files. Here we go. Um, let me share my screen. So if you are on, uh, where's Facebook? Let's see. Here we go. If you are on Facebook and you go to Mahjong Community, which is our group, if you click on this files tab right here, so we have done how to read the card. Here's the tracker that Barney mentioned. We, for different holidays, we do different hands. So we post a lot of different things here, as well as if you do, um, if you just search for part, let's see, part two. So here is an example. We did part one, part two, and part three. We went through and we reviewed in part one, where are there pungs that are the same number? Where are there kongs that are same number? Where are there pungs and kongs? In part two, we did flowers and dragons. And it's just a great exercise to quiz yourself on how many hands have quince of flowers, kongs, pungs. And what's great about this, if you know this, then it's easier to switch hands, it's easier to choose a hand, to identify exposures, to figure out safer discards. And for those of you who will hear this in a few seconds because you're on YouTube, I was trying to get the comments on there too. Katie Albert, when you were talking about discard, the safest discard is a joker. So if you are playing and you know you can't win and it's towards the end and you have jokers, that's what you should be discarding. Because even if you think it's a safe pile, you might as well get rid of the joker because you can't win. So no one else can ever call your joker. Um, if everybody can mute themselves, Patty, if you can mute yourself, that would be great. So I just have a question at some point. Thank you. Okay. Um, there is a way you could raise your hand, but since you're unmuted, um, if you want to ask your question, go right ahead. Are you still doing Zoom calls, uh, you and Dara? This is Dara. I'm sorry, you and Donna? <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. we have two. Thank you. We have two upcoming Zooms. We have one in two weeks, April 17th. And then we have another one on May 5th. And that's Barney just mentioned, um, Bubby Fisher, Karen Gouin. And it's really funny because I loved Barney's mustache in the beginning. We um, love all the different things that people are calling their, um, everybody's calling the different new pattern. And um, let's see. So um, Tom Sloper called it a W, Karen called it a sombrero. So it actually worked out perfectly that May 5th is the date that we're doing her event. Um, I think Michelle Frizzell, I'm trying to think of what she called it. Somebody called it a crown. So um, a friend of mine actually said it kind of looks like you're shooting someone the bird. <laughs> 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 
So it's really great. And the reason, as silly as it sounds with Barney's mustache, it will help you when you're in the middle of the game think, oh, wait a second, it was the mustache. So it went up, down, up, down it. And it will help you quickly think of a hand. So um, I am gonna scroll through. I know it's wonderful to see all the thank yous. So those are great. But if anybody, we have a few minutes before we wrap up, if anybody wants to raise their hand and we could do a question. I know earlier, earlier there were some questions about, um, let's see, there were some questions about different hands changing. Oh, people were asking which hands were the same. Don't you, I think you call it the same, even if there's a slight deviation or? Yes, yes, I, I will say, generally my rule is, it's exactly the same, but I had I use a little bit of a little bit of liberty to say, you know what? If the only thing that makes this hand different than last year is the fact that that one used twenty twenty three and this one's using twenty twenty four, but the pattern was the same, that's the same hand to me. Yeah, of course the twenty twenty three can't match identically, but that's that's it. That's the liberty that I take. Yeah. Okay, so I found the question I was looking for. So Anne had asked about the quint hand. And she had said, why would they use one and eight um, rather than like one or nine? And I think the reason they didn't use two odds or two evens, I think people's mind, like if you look at the word red and it's written in green, it kind of messes with your head. So even if they had in parentheses any two numbers, but it was two odd numbers or two consecutive numbers, I think that would have thrown people off. Yes. So I think it was very smart that they picked one and eight. I and agree. As, as an aside, White Dragon can only be used for zero in the 2024 hand or in that section. It cannot be used in the quint section as a number, not in any like, not in consecutive run. So I love it because it just shows that there's a not a lot of new players, but we've been getting a lot of questions of, well, how come we can't start with zero? Which is very creative and outside the box, but in Maja Made Easy, they say you cannot. So, okay, so we have, let's see, um, Blair, you have a question? You have to unmute first, Blair. Oh. Okay. Uh, Barney, what, hi. hi, how are you? Um, question is, what are the best pivots that you have um, for singles and pairs? Oh, uh, you know, I haven't started to list all of my pivots, but I could certainly start thinking about them. So the pivot, obviously, for the big hand goes to the concealed uh, to 2024. Um, right. The 369, I think, is... Uh, you know what? Let me just quickly look here. Um, and while Barney's looking, um, if, if you look at the singles and pairs, what I actually do is before, if I don't get jokers, the first thing I do always is I start with single and pairs. And then as I pick in jokers, hopefully, fingers crossed, then I'll switch unless I'm really close and then I'll discard jokers to keep going for it. But if you look at the singles and pairs, they correlate to each yes. of the sections pretty much. Right, and yeah. Usually, and usually the concealed hand, but not always. Sometimes you could dump a few jokers and go for what I call an easier hand, but a, a more forgiving hand. Yeah, I, I tell you, I think, you know, the 2468 on the top, that goes to the 2468 top to the right in two different suits, I think. That's the natural one there. I do think, though, interestingly enough, though, the 13579, notice that singles and pairs hand, that spans all of the numbers, all of the odd numbers. You don't have that many that span all of the numbers in the 13579, except, of course, my mustache hand. So I'm thinking the 13579 probably is going to the mustache hand, to be honest with you, because all the other ones are either fives and above or one through five. Very few of them are spanning. Of course, the other one, the one with the three pairs up front, that does it as well. The 135 in one suit and then the sevens and nines in two different suits. But um, but that's it. And you know, the other thing, Blair, I forgot to mention, I got to tell you, I, I should have put this in my notes. I haven't heard anyone say that they were more happy than any hand coming back this year than that 998, 99887. Everyone loves that singles and pairs hand. So for some reason, I think people are going to be very happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that hand. And it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting because when you were saying about pivoting the hands, maybe the 1357. What are gaps? might be being made a lot because I find that it is very, um, Janice, if you could mute yourself. 
Oh, sorry. That's okay. Don't I worry. Find the five, seven, um, seven, nine with the dragons. I picked in a few jokers and I was right into the five, seven, nine with the sevens. I mean, it was yes. amazing how quickly that switched. Yes. A yeah. lot of overlap. So I'm going to go to Sarah. Can you unmute yourself? Do you no. see, I just asked you to unmute. So you just click on your microphone and you should be able to unmute. And if you can't, then you could just type your question. Uh, um, all right, I am gonna go to S Fleming next. So whoever could figure out how to unmute. Okay, you did it. I am wondering if in a Pong, you can use three jokers. Yes. Absolutely. You. you could use four jokers. So just the, the, pivot, the, the caveat to that is, which yes, you can, but you could never call a joker to make that. When you show Mahjong, you can have that as an exposure. Or yes. not as, as Mahjong, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sarah, were you able to unmute? I click on ask to unmute, so it should pop up that you should be able to. If not, if you could do it in the chat. Is there, is there anyone else that had a question that wanted to raise their hand? Shafrit, you want to add something? Sure, you could unmute. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to add, uh, maybe this is the case, because I think Barney mentioned something earlier about the 13579 kind of being popular or easy to make. And my take on that, and maybe correct me, is that because it's a 2024 hand, you've got a lot of pairs. So you've got a lot of twos and fours and sixes and eights. People are vying for it. And I think it's freeing up the uh, odd numbers. So it's I, I like that explanation. And I agree with it. I I do agree with that. Um, I, ju I just, for me, it was overwhelming how the how much it slanted because i yeah. thought between the two four six eight now that we have 2024 with all these even numbers so you have you say everything in 2024 all the two four six eight there's a lot of hands there but for some reason it is all shifted to odds but i, I think, think i think you're onto something i do yeah i think everyone's excited to do those 2024 so this is why it's my turn to go to the odds and veer <laughs> <laughs> that way thank, thank you. you thank you Hi, I, I was able to unmute. Oh, oh terrific. Sorry. Uh, anyhow, Barney, thanks a lot. This was terrific. I just wanted to add that you said there were no um, quints where you would need only one joker. And I think that bottom quint is one that you can do if you're lucky enough to have five flowers. Thank you. I love that. You're right. Thank you so much. I'm going to update. I, I need to update my notes. Thank you. That's exactly right. You don't need a joker. you only one. Beautiful. Right. Thank you. So with that, um, Barney, we, we, oh wait, is there someone else? That, oh no, that was Sarah. So I'm just gonna double check our chat before we sign off. So for, for, um, for any of the hands, the spacing on the card does not, somebody was asking or reminding us about um, spacing and using jokers. So if it is not three or more identical tiles, you cannot use a joker. It doesn't matter about the spacing of the card. So, and none of the hands in singles and pairs can you use a joker. Oh, do we lose Barney? No, I'm here. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I'm okay. sorry. The sound so, that's written right. <laughs> can you repeat what you just said, that last thing? So none of the hands in singles and pairs can you use jokers and spacing on the card is not what makes it um, allowable. So if you have a four or six, if you have news, if you have any of those things, they are grouping of singles and you cannot use a joker. If Now this is where some new players get confused. If it is the 14th tile you need, a natural tile, not a joker, you can call a single to win, but you still can't use a joker. Got it. So the quint that people were talking about that you can use, let's see, where was I? Sorry to make you busy here. No, that was our thank you. Here's your talk that everybody's going to get. And I'm going to fix that before we send out the notes, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah. No you know, of course. Yeah. That number four in the Quinn section, the five flat, because there are five flowers, you don't need a joker there. So that's, that's a really great catch. Thank you. 
So the only time you could use a joker when it's three or more identical tiles, everything else, even if it's mushed together like news, you cannot use a joker. So we have, um, I can't tell from where I am right now on this. Let's stop this. Oh, people are joining now. Um, so did anybody still have, here, let me see. Robin, did you wanna ask a question? Um, I uh, Unfortunately, I live in Canada, so I have not received my card yet. But I know that in previous years, um, there have been some ambiguous explanations on the card about what the Mahjong is. Did you find on this card that there were any uh, Mahjongs that needed clarification that were not clear enough? I think they did, and I'm speaking for then Barney could give his insight. I think they did a wonderful job. I think there's much less confusion. The frequently asked questions that I shared to Mahjong community are more of helping people read the card. Um, is such as the like number pungs in the three, six, nine, that fourth hand must be like numbers. Um, with the quince, that it could be any two non-same suited number. Um, some of the other ones, let me see. Um, Barney, what are your thoughts on that? I, I would agree with the ones you've pointed out. The other one, again, if you've never heard the term before about the non-matching or the alternate uh, dragons, that might be a term that isn't, People might not be, you know, not that familiar with opposite dragon. We talked about that earlier, but I too agree. I did not find a, you know, anything here that to me said, okay, they're going to get bombarded. They're going to get bombarded with this hand. I don't see anything that was tricky. To be very honest with you, these are just what we came up with from what we saw people asking. Um, sometimes new players don't realize that the color on the card does not mean green means game. Right. So it just means how many times you need to change suits. And a lot of times people don't realize that the zero is suit neutral. So that number two hand, the four flowers, and then the Kong of twos, zeros, and then 24, the two or the 24, either one of those can be dots. It, the zero is not dots. That's just a zero. Right. Um, for the... For the addition hands, some people might not know that it's only those numbers. So it's only what's listed that adds up to seven. Uh, in 13579, that <laughs> section, and we have a whole review where we call it um, how to read the card, and we call them sections fixed, flexible, and, and hybrid. 13579 is a fixed section. You can only do those. Um, Sarah Shanzer, if you can mute yourself, because we hear background noise. Um, you could only do those numbers. The reason that specific hand says these numbers only is because the two contrasting opposing pungs must be the middle number. So if you do one, three, five, you can't do ones or fives for those pungs. And the five, seven, nines, you have to do sevens. You can't do fives or nines. Right. And basically, those were it. I mean, there really is not. I know at the beginning of last year, there were you know calls to the league. We got a ton of messages through Facebook on Mahjong Community. I think it's a much, much um, less confusing card for however everybody's experienced. Great, great, great. good. Yeah. Can't wait. Thanks, Barney. Oh, my pleasure, Robin. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. Do you see me? I don't know if I'm up there or not, but yeah, I don't know, know how to. I don't know how to raise my hand. We oh. see you, but we see the bottom of your chin. If you want to lower, if you want to, no, 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 go, go there. We see you. Perfect. Okay. Good. <laughs> now we see your smiling face. Anyway, um, so I didn't get to watch it. Okay, I wanted to, but I didn't. Now, is, is will I be able to watch this again on yes. YouTube? Or we are going to take the video that we are recording right now. We're going to take it down from YouTube edit it so it is all nice and pretty and wrapped in a bow and then put it back on YouTube. We'll put links to Facebook. And if you get our newsletter, we will send out an email when it's ready. And well, in, you, in the YouTube you, okay. notes, Go ahead. we'll have links to the chart and the other information. So if you don't get our email, you could go to this website and subscribe. Go to, go to um, mahjong.com. 
Yep. ModernMahjong.com. Yeah. yeah. And if you happen to get like promotion, if you have Gmail, sometimes it goes to like promotion email, just move it into your main primary email so you don't miss it. Well, I don't have Gmail. I have Comcast. Okay. So okay. I don't know whether that, but no, Mahjong, Mahjong, have... ModernMahjong.com and sign yes. up for the newsletter. Yes. So I, I have it. an observation. I noticed on the card, every section except two has four flowers. There, there, we did um, just what I showed before on our group. We did a review and we quizzed everyone how many five flower hands, how many whatever. And we went through and I think there's, there's seven, only two that don't have four flowers. There's, I think there's 17 hands with pairs of flowers. No, I, I, no, I just, yeah. okay. I was just making four flowers. If yeah. somebody put up four flowers, yeah. they could be playing any section except two. That's right. That's right. The addition yeah. hand and the singles and pairs, they That's don't right. have four flowers, but they could be playing any hand That's on this right. card except those two. That's right. And quits. And, and quits. And quits. Course, you can't do no it. flowers in addition. Either. That's right. Right. Dara, I have a, a, a quick, um, Barney, when you had said that there are only sections that don't have dragons was the addition hands. Um, you forgot that the 2024s does not have dragons because in that particular case there's zeros. Yeah, I, I yes, that's a good that's a good call out on that. I I used them in that situation. They are zeros, but to me they were they're dragons that you're collecting on the tile. So yes, you are right. Yes, if you were I, very being strict, you're absolutely right. Well, I think if you're writing it in some and call them dragons, that's going to confuse people at that yeah, point. Yeah, good point. Yep. Thank you. Um, I can't tell. I think Robin already asked a question. If you could lower your hand. Patty, did you have something? And then Barney, whenever you're ready, we'll wrap it up. I think we have like time for one or two more. That sounds great. Okay. I know we could keep you here all night, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, Patty, could, or actually Reva already spoke. Patty, can you unmute? Barney. Hi. What is your, I'm sorry. What is your mustache hand i i miss that oh it's, it's the one that looks i think someone called it a sombrero it looks like a w if you look on the card you do have the card in front of you i do okay so the top two hands for the one three five seven nine mm -hmm. you see what they look like so it starts with three and then it goes down to two numbers and then up to four numbers down to two so it's it's, okay. make, it's making what looks like a w thank you yes and Meredith, did you want to unmute? Hi, yes, thank you. Could you explain to me the second line in 369? I'm not understanding where it has the um, nine punk, three punk, three punk. Could you explain that to me? Sure, sure. So that hand, uh, you're going to have the pair of flowers. You're going to have a single three, a pair of sixes, and then three or a punk of nines. That that those numbers all need to be of the same suit. Doesn't have to be green, but it could be any suit, but they all have to match. So the three, the pair of sixes and the three nines have to be of the same suit. Then it's saying, now you need three of a kind and three of a kind in the other suits. And those three of a kinds can be threes, sixes, or nines. So you could have... Three threes, three threes, three sixes, three sixes, three nines, three nines. And that way you're going to have all three suits represented in that pattern. Okay, but the but the nine pong that comes before has to be nine. Yes, three six nine has to be just like you're talking second hand okay. down, correct? Yep. Yes. Yes, three six nine. Yes. Has to okay. be. Nine. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, so let me go back to stopping this share. I think um, that was Meredith and Karen, did you have a question? No, I don't. Oh, okay. I, that was, that was oh. my, my question was the mustache question, same thing. Oh, I no, no, I think it was a different, I'm sorry. Oh, Karen. Sorry. Karen with another R, it was like Karen Ryan, but I think she disappeared. Oh. Can I ask a question? I can't lift my hand. I can't sure. find out. Oh, good. You can hear me. I'm just 
confused on when you were talking about north south hand was the same as last year but you and you showed like two sixes two sevens four eights but but it i don't see that on the card that was last so, year's card that, yeah was, that was last year's but you said it was the same as this year's well meaning and by same i meant that they both started with the three norths and the three souths so in the same section of the card you're going to see this pattern of three norths three souths and last year it had two pairs and four of a kind. So the yeah. north and south are the same, but this year it's much easier because it's only four and four. So you can use dragons. Four and four, you could use dragons. Which the third one down? Uh four you're you're looking at yes, the third one down, the north, south, then you have four and four, right? The four yeah. ones and four twos. Oh, you mean you mean jokers. Jokers. Jokers, not oh, dragons. jokers. What did I say? Sorry. Dragons. Oh, did I say dragons? Oh my yes. <laughs> Dra Jokers, not dragons. I'm sorry. Oh, but it's not this. Okay. Because I was confused. I thought it was like, I was looking no. for the same hand with a pair, a pair, and a. No, 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 no. Sorry about okay. that. No. Hi, can I ask a question? I don't know if you hear me. Sure, we, we can. Do. Okay. Um, I joined a little late. I just I got home late, and of course, I would like to see that. Like I heard somebody else ask, and you said it will be posted on YouTube or on the group, which I I belong to. Now, at being in Canada, sadly, we don't see the I don't see the card in front of me. So when you're just talking, I'm sometimes you're showing it on the screen, which is great. But um, are the notes that you have? Are we going to be able to print them? Yes. Yes. Uh, where are they? Where are we going to find them? Are they going to be in an email? Um, yeah. Do you want to go through where they will actually find the notes? Yeah. I make so we will put in, in YouTube, we'll have notes. And a lot of times some people don't know to look down. We'll have notes with where the links are. We'll have it on Facebook and we'll send it out by email. And actually it was ready to go. Barney's going to make a little change and then we'll update it and send it out. And okay, then it'll great. take a little while longer for the video to go. Okay, right. so the video, so we can get the notes actually a little before we'll see the video again. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. okay, great. It's so, so sad we, that we have to wait. A, I would love to see the card as you're doing this, but we don't have it. Yeah, some people in Canada did get the card. It just takes a little while longer. I yeah, think it depends think. on how big of a group you ordered and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. thank you all so much for joining us. And Barney, once again, another informative and entertaining night. Um, Thank you. Dara, Dara. Yes. Hi, I'm sorry. I've been raising my hand and putting in the chat just before you go. I still don't know where to get that sheet that looks like graph paper where yeah. Barney was saying you, you it, write out the hand. If you're on Facebook, if you go yeah. to Facebook on community and then go in files, it's the tracker file. Okay. Cause I went on my, I went on, I, okay. I, it's it's not the modern mahjong site. Well, I'm not. Modern I'm mahjong gonna... is our business site where we yeah. share pictures of our beautiful dice and all that fun stuff. Mahjong community is more of where we build ah. community and help. So that's where we share all the files. So the site on Facebook is called Mahjong Community. Yeah, you should probably be able to just click that link that I just put in the chat. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Can I can well, I ask one thing? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And first, I want to thank you guys, Barney. I, I look forward to this every year. I mean, it's just, oh. I love doing this and I, I love to write notes and stuff. So you, you meant, yeah, Bar Barney, you mentioned before about like 12 hands that came back. Yes. But you're saying, but not the exact pattern, correct? Because I only see, I've knocked my brains out looking at this card because I've been, we played today for the first time. I only see like the first Winds and Dragons hands like exactly as last year. And then the third hand, which I guess they moved from the 56 yeah. line, uh, right. the consecutive run. But that's the only two that are like exact, exact, correct? So do me, no, there's more than that. So do me a favor and just email yeah. me. Just send me an email and I'll send you all of them. Okay, if Barney. You want, if, you want, we could, if you want, we yeah. could post it, Barney. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. And if not, you could just email me at barneyg at me.com. That's, that's, okay. uh, yeah, my email's out there. So just email me. That'd be great. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much. I have a, a quick question too, if that's okay. Sure. Um, you said, Barney, that you play with robots. I've I've played uh, on realmajan.com. What yeah. other sites can we play on? And maybe oh. some that we don't have to pay for? 
you know what? I only play on real Mahjong for the month of April. And then I go to something called Mahjong Time, which you do have to pay for that one. I, I thought at one time there was a free, I think to play on the league's uh, version, there's a cost to doing that, but I don't know. Is there a free site? So my, my, Mahjong.net gives you, I think, I think during COVID they gave eight, but now they give four free games a day. Okay. Mahjong for Friends. And I think it's, I'm not sure if it's 1G or two, but Mahjong for Friends gives you a free site. And um, stay tuned. American Mahjong Practice app is great because you could do it on your phone and you don't need Wi-Fi. You could use cellular. We are, we did a giveaway last year. Ray is going to give us um, five gift cards, I believe. So we can do gift cards for the American Mahjong Practice app. And what's great about that is just like Barney said about taking a picture with your phone, you can have it on your phone and you don't even need the card with you because it shows you while you're first learning how far away you are from certain hands. So it's really a great way to learn the card. So with that being said, before anybody jumps in, I'm going to let you go. <laughs> but thank you so much. We really, really appreciate all your insight. And thank you all for taking time out of your Thursday to join us here and learn about Mahjan and wishing you guys great games. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank it's a you pleasure. All. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so nice when everyone's saying thank you. We get to say wave goodbye. <laughs> I see everybody that joined us. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, all. Okay. Good night.